Hi and welcome to RC Modders and this is the second instalment in the Bruder Jeep Wrangler conversion to full RC. In this episode we're going to be covering the conversion of the axles, modifying the stock wheels, trimming the engine bay to accommodate the battery, installing the motors and installing an auxiliary channel socket in the bumper for controlling the trailer etc. Throughout the video I'll be using numerous 3D printed parts which I've designed for this and those can be downloaded for free at Thingiverse. The link to that is in the description below. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is to strip and tin eight pieces of the very thin silicon wire. These are all six inches long which is much longer than they need to be but we can easily shorten them afterwards and at 25 per meter I'm not too worried about it. For those who are interested the thickness of this wire is about 0.56 of a millimeter and that's the outside of the covering. I bought this from Component Shop. I think I've probably got a link to their site in the description. Having done that, you want to hold the motors in something, and I've just put them in the vise here. Before attaching the wires to the motors, I'm just going to put a tiny dab of solder on each of the connectors. It makes them stick more easily. If you look really closely, the motors do actually have a little plus symbol in the corner so you can tell which is which. To be quite honest I don't think it makes a lot of difference because we're going to be trying the wires both ways around to make sure the motors are turning the right way and then just go ahead and attach all of the wires. Those are all done. If you've got any excess wires sticking out of the bottom doesn't do any harm just to trim them because it's fairly tight inside the 3D prints that hold the motors. Next thing to think about is the rear axle and if we just look at the one which has already been done you can see how quite a bit has been trimmed off in order that the 3D printed parts can be slotted in. With these you literally need to trim everything on this side of that little bit that sticks up there so this here has kind of got a little cross on it what you'll be doing is you'll be taking that top bit off all the way down there and round so we'll do that to be accurate it's probably best to do one side then flip it over and do the other side Okay, that's not bad at all. Maybe a little trim with a knife, but I think that's going to be okay. I'll just do the other one. And I think that'll be good to go. Okay, now before going any further, it's worth noting that there are some little bits of plastic up inside these ends here. And what I did was I used a knife like this, which is easy enough to get hold of, to get in there and literally slice across and to make sure that each of those was out. Unfortunately, I haven't got this on camera, but if you look down the hole there, it should be perfectly clear, the square hole, and then you know that you're good. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to sort out the motor holder for the rear. This one here I've already done so you can see what we're aiming for and when we're finished this should be able to just slide in like this and sit nice and flat and it's really important that when it's pushed down it's actually sitting flat that way or as flat as possible okay now you may notice that I switched to using orange parts partly it's because I had Prusa orange in the printer sitting there waiting to be used and also I think it'll probably show up better in the video because the black against black isn't so good. When it comes off the printer there is often quite a bit of what's known as support in there and so you can see that there's someone on the bottom here 
and there's actually quite a bit inside the motor holder itself. It's really important, especially inside the motor, to get every little bit of it out, otherwise you'll find that the motor won't click in nicely, or if you do push it in, it'll end up splitting the case. So the most obvious bit that we need to deal with first is at the back, there's actually a cutout in here to take the shape of the rear end of the motor, including where the wires are soldered on to. And that bit actually has to be picked out. So hopefully you'll be able to see this. I'll just zoom in. Right, we seem to have reasonable focus. So that bit will actually pick out and it comes out as a whole piece like that. Okay. And that needs to come out. And then generally all around the inside, you need to make sure that you scrape out all the little bits which might be left behind and bearing in mind that at this end here there is also a little cutout for this little bearing here on the end of the motor so we just make sure that we scrape all of that out so that it's going to go in there nicely the hole here needs to be at least three millimeters and it's probably worth just checking with a three millimeter drill bit to make sure that that's all going in there nicely and yes it is. In order to get this bit here of the support off, what we need to do is we need to trim it off with a knife. Now, even though this comes off fairly easily, I would certainly advocate getting a brand new Stanley blade before doing this sort of thing, because it's just gonna make it so much easier and actually more safe, I think. So, just slicing forward. And just keep going until you can't see any of the pattern and then similarly the other way around making sure all the time that you're slicing away from yourself then taking the black axle again it will slide in at an angle like so and I can and I can feel that is still too tight so I'm going to take some more off And that is a perfect fit and if I push it down inside I can see that we've achieved something reasonably flat. Okay so the next thing to do is to put one of the motors in there. Now the motor should slide in firmly and you shouldn't have to keep taking it in and out but you should be able to take it out. Not that it's worth testing that. If it goes in and it's in the right place I'll just leave it there. So we'll just push that down gently. And there we have it nicely clicked in and the really important thing is that it's flat across here and it's seated in there nicely now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put some hot glue on the wires because this is potentially a weak point on the model and we're going to put it just here and here and have the wires so that they're going forward like you can see here just a little bit because that's going to keep the motors away from the suspension springs which would otherwise damage the wires and you'll end up having to keep resoldering it. I'll just heat up the hot glue gun. You don't need masses of it just a little bit so I'll get some in there and if you put too much on you can always slice it off afterwards. Some on that side some on that side there that should be good let that cool and then I'm just going to trim out a little bit between the wires here for where the spring is going to go making sure I don't chop these wires at all that's it so that's nice and flat in the middle there. I'm not so worried about the edges, but in the middle I want it flat because otherwise I'm going to end up with different rates on the springs. Just a little bit more. That's it, perfect. And that's almost ready to go in. Just before we do, I'm going to put the retaining collar 3D printed part around the front here. That stops the motor from ever wanting to come out. Not that I think it's likely, but it's a belt and braces thing. So that's these parts, and that should just easily push on. 
You may find it easier at this point to use a couple of the pieces which I made. First of all there's this which is the pusher for the wheel adapters and just take one of the wheel adapters which we haven't used yet and you can just pop that in it and then you can poke the motor shaft through the hole and push quite firmly and with that and with that nice and flush this is done I'm just going to check that the motor is turning ok that seems to be alright so this piece is ready to put in if we put them both in now so we've got the one on that side which we just did and that's in nicely and then we'll put the one in from the other side which is what I did earlier like so and then the two should push together and meet in the middle let's move this one along a bit something like that and when they're pushed down they will actually go tighter what we're going to do now is we're going to take this little block which I included with the 3D prints and we're going to use that to push it down so that we can put a retaining screw in there to stop things moving around so I'll just do this up making sure I'm not snagging any wires okay so that is now holding everything very flat and ready for us to draw a hole. Now taking a 2.5mm bit I'm going to go in this area here, I'll just zoom in so you can see exactly what I'm doing. And I'm only going to go through about halfway through because I can't be sure it's going to come out on the other side in the place that I want. And I think it's safer doing it with a pin vise rather than an electric drill to be quite honest because you can stop when you want to. That's one side. Then I'm going to flip this over and do the other side. So that is now going straight the way through and it's good if you can avoid damaging this part here because that's what it uses to hold the axle in on the suspension. I'm now going to put in a couple of grub screws and because I know that the total width from one side to the other is somewhere around 12mm I'm going to put in an 8mm and a 5mm. I'll start with the 8mm because that's, because that's going to go through both the outside and both of the axle halves inside. If I had a 12mm one I'd probably just use that but I don't so I'm putting two in. Then I'm going to flip it over and everything should stay in place but I think it's worth keeping it under tension while we're doing these up. And then we'll put in the 5mm one. they should be meeting somewhere in the middle so that I think is good so we have so we have a reasonably flat axle which is nice and firmly mounted together and it's actually ready to go into the truck really now before we clip the axle in we need to make some holes inside the truck for the wires to come out and the place that they go is here 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 and here so I'll just do those quickly I'm using a 1.8 millimeter bit because that's about the best size for the wires one okay so that's those done flip the truck upside down 
take our axle and with the rear one it doesn't really matter which way around it goes the front is absolutely critical you need to get that the right way around otherwise suspension just doesn't work and before we click it in first thing we're going to do is we're going to locate the springs okay so the springs are going to go in there and there put this down and then we're going to just post the wires in to the holes that we just made The next thing to do is to making sure that the wires are out of the way of everything, including the springs. Locate these two pieces here onto the springs. Like so, having managed just to get it located, before I click it, I'm actually going to pull the wires through a bit them completely out of the way that's it and then a firm push plus a little help from the screwdriver maybe And we have our suspension in, it moves up and down and it rocks and the wires are all out of the way. So that is basically the rear end of the suspension done and this will be ready to have the wheels put on. I shan't do any of the wiring now but I will go and have a quick cup of tea.